Hey there, welcome to this video where I'm going to start working on the front instrument panel for my F-101 fighter. Now I've already created an image plane here uh, based on some photographs I've got and off on the right hand side here I have my pure ref set up with some of my references. I've got some general uh, arrangements over here, some close-ups of some of the parts of the panel and then you know some close-ups of some of the actual instruments as well. Uh, just to get an idea of uh, what things look like. Um, you know, this this kind of view is great for laying things out if you can get it. Uh, but then if you can get oblique views that are slightly angled, um, you know, like this one gives you an idea of how deep things are and how recessed things are. And um, you know, having a variety of information is always good to start with. So let's start with uh, just this drawing because we're going to create the back panel here first. So just with my cursor kind of here, I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to do wireframe mode so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to position this so that it's basically on the edges of the, the uh, panel here. Like that. Like that. And then I'm going to add edge loops in for kind of key cutouts. So there's a cutout here that goes there. One that goes there, one that goes there, and then this part of the panel, the armament uh, panel is recessed, so I can just hit GZ and kind of share that, so I'm getting a cut there, and I think that looks pretty good. Now we want to apply rotation and scale because we're going to do some beveling, and beveling doesn't work particularly well if things are not scaled out. So I'm going to get rid of this face, and I'm going to get rid of this face since these are um, not part of the panel. If we look at our reference material, you can see that that's a, a cutout there. It's a separate piece, and that the armament panel here is a separate piece. So those can go. So now we've got this basic shape. So now we just need to add the rounded bits. So I'm going to go into edit mode, and I'm going to select these two corners because they're the same curvature. I'm going to hit Control Shift B which lets me bevel the points, and I'm gonna pick an odd number of points. All right, so I got one, two, three, four, five. If I wanted to, if I undo that, um, I hit Control Shift B, and then you can use your scroll wheel to change the number of, of points. I like to have an odd number because it uh, flows better, I think. I think that's all right there. We're going to do other corners. So these two are the same radius, so we can do those at the same time. This one is not symmetrical, so I'm going to do this one by itself. i do that one there. This one is not symmetrical, so I'm going to do a small one there, small one there. This one is symmetrical, so we'll pull that up. You can see on the inside ones, you get a lot more of this fanning kind of thing, so we'll take care of that in a minute. Just to select everything and see how I've got everything. I think I followed the path pretty well. So there's our first bit. I'm going to move this out along the y-axis. I'm going to hit, I'm going to, to edge mode, so I hit the 2 on my number pad. I'm just going to select all the edges around here. Going all the way around, I'm going to hit E, Y, push it straight back, and I'm going to select this edge, hit Control i to re inverse my selection so I have this face, hit X faces, I'm going to get rid of all that. And now I'm going to double click on this edge again so I get that whole perimeter. I'm going to hit F to fill it. And then I can hit the I key, and this is going to give me a nice perfect edge loop that follows all the way around there, uh, which is what I want because this, um, this panel is kind of rounded off on the edges. So we need a little bit of control on the edges, and this parallel edge here is going to help with that. So now I can get rid of these faces. I don't need them right now. At this point, I want to look for any odd vertices to see if anything kind of overlapped or anything with that. But uh, I think we're OK for now for that. So that gives us our general overall panel. Next thing I want to do is I want to create uh, some tools that will let us cut out the holes for the instruments. Because we go back to our reference material for a moment, you can see that the holes are here and that they're rounded, rounded in. So in order to create this kind of shape, we're going to need to A, cut a hole out. But then we're going to need a control loop 
going around the edge here uh, to help us control this bevel. So to do that, I'm going to just say, stick my cursor up here by the clock, shift A, create a mesh, create a circle, and I want eight edges. Eight's generally enough for this kind of thing. You don't need more than that for most circles. I do want to turn on, I want to add a subdivision to this because that'll give me a better idea of the shape. Like, you know, like this, it's, it's just too much of a, it's too sharp. I can't really tell how big the circle is. Uh, but now I can tell exactly how big that circle is. I'm gonna put it you know, right, right there on that clock face. I'm gonna to edit mode with everything selected, E, S. I'm gonna pull it out, making sure that I'm in uh, median point. I got lucky there. So median point, that's gonna give me uh, a parallel ring around there. Now this clock has two cutouts here for these knobs. So I need to create a different circle for this. So I'm going to create a mesh in a circle. Now because this is gonna have a, a straight edge, I actually wanna have maybe 12 edges for this. So let's go down, shrink it down. I'm gonna put it about there. We can adjust it later. ES to give me my parallel lines. And I'm going to take off the top half, just select those, delete the faces, select these two, E, Z, straight up. And now I'm going to, now that I'm in my, the origin's still here, I can rotate this around. And I'm gonna to try to scale it down and move it until it lines up. Now keeping in mind that this photograph, there is some parallax on this photograph, so things aren't always going to line up perfectly with the uh, picture. If it was a drawing, it would be different, but uh, it's a picture, so there is gonna be some angles to stuff. You can see how this kind of protrudes out to the left a little bit. So that's gonna create our cutout for that knob, and then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna rotate this around. And this one is a little smaller, and it just bumps out a little bit, like that. And I'm gonna select the outer edge, hit GG to move along the normal C, pull it out, and I'm just gonna to try to make this distance here about the same as that distance there. And I'll do the same thing with this guy. G, G, C, pull it out. And then we'll use these as a cutout tool to cut out the holes in the, uh, in the instrument panel. All right, let's come down here. We're just gonna go around the dashboard here and, and create our circles. And then there's one more cutout up here. You can see that in our reference material, it's recessed. So I need to make that cutout as well. And for that, I'm going to create a plane, scale it down. Just kind of move it into position here. Kind of taking the maximum edges of it. So all the way at the top, all the way at the bottom. I want to apply rotation and scale because I'm going to use a bevel again and want to make sure that that works. So I'm going to just take that point, control shift B, bring it in. These two are the same, so control shift B. And if your points go past each other like that, just hit the C key, Charlie, and that'll keep them from going through each other. And this one, I'm going to go down and I'm going to select all these guys go into active element and then hit S, Z, Z, and just scale it down. That'll give me that, that curve there. Hit all and then M and then merge by distance. And let's see, let's move this out away from here so we can see what we're doing. And this guy I'm going to E, Y, because I want to create a parallel edge again, kind of like I did with the instrument panel itself. Um, so I'm going to select that, delete the faces, and for this, what I can do, because I want this to be, uh, looking at from the front, I want a parallel edge extruded out here. And an easy way to do that is to create a solidify modifier with even thickness turned on. And then we can just maybe make this six millimeters or something. We don't need a lot. We just need a little bit of a control loop there um, that'll let us maintain that bevel. And we don't want it to go too far because it's gonna interfere with the other control loops. 
so maybe five. Um, so that'll give us that shape there. So now if I apply this, and if I go into edit mode and delete these faces and these faces, and then I say, then we look at that, and uh, that gives us a nice flow for that piece as well. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got so far. I'm gonna move all this stuff this way, move this this way, just kind of put things, stack them in order. So we've got our cutouts. Actually, I think I missed, there are two of these cutouts there. So let's go back into wireframe. I'm gonna duplicate this and reuse it. Uh, yeah, but there are a couple other things I did miss, a couple other recesses. So we'll do that one there. Shift D, move it straight over. So we got those two cutouts. This is also a cutout, and so is this radio call. So let's put a circle here. Um, but this one we'll do, yeah, we can do 12, because we're gonna need to maintain this pill shape look to it. So scale this down, add a subdivision. Get it moved into position. Edit mode, Oops. ES, edit mode, there we go, ES, scale it up to get our edges. And I'm going to select these and hit Y to separate the pieces, then GX to drag it that way. Uh, and now I can just hit F to fill these two edges here. And that gives us that shape. And then we can reuse this shape over here. Rotate it 90 degrees. And just stick it up here and go into edit mode and just drag these straight down. All right. So you can see what we've got. We've got all the little templates we're going to use to make cutouts in that underlying shape. I'm just kind of checking to make sure I didn't miss anything. I think we're okay. All right, so that's step one. The next step is converting these circles and other pieces um, into tools that we can use to um, use the knife project tool to cut out the holes that we need. So I'm going to select all these guys and Control J to join them. Go into edit mode, select all my faces, hit X, and then choose the only faces option. That'll give me just the outlines of everything. And then in order to use the knife project tool, we select our target go into edit mode, hit A to select everything, and then control left click to select our cutting tool. And you wanna be in whatever view is going to project straight through because the knife tool projects from the view of your, your viewport here. So in this case, I'm looking straight on in an orthographic view. And I hit F3 on the keypad and I type the knife project. You can type knife project. I'm gonna use cut through just to make sure I cut completely through. Let's hide our image plane for a moment and we'll hide these guys and we'll see what that gives us and that gives us this disaster uh, so the first thing to do here is to just cut out uh, the pieces that are easily removed I like to start with the simple stuff first so that means cutting out all the things that are the holes so in this case all the way around there these guys that guy and then just hit X and then delete the faces and that gives us that and don't worry about the fact that we got some weird points there uh, at this point I'm just trying to clean it up so I can uh, look at it more easily and see what's what so I'm just going to go around and clean up all the bits we don't want all right so that's the first step here is to get rid of all these pieces. The next thing to do is to start either consolidating or uh, cleaning up these odd points. Um, so for you know, for example, here we want this all to be kind of a a nice flowing bit here. So I can take these points. Now in this case, um, whenever you're near the perimeter here, we want to maintain this line, right? Because this is going to control the bevel on the outside here, um, and we don't want to really move this too much. So in this particular case, um, I might actually merge these down to here, so M at last. Um, it does change the 
uh, control line for this this instrument, but it maintains that line there. Uh, sometimes you have to make a choice between one or the other. So I'm just going to go around and clean stuff up now. All right, so I've cleaned up all of my orphans, and uh, the key things to keep in mind here is one, to try to keep some kind of edge loop around the outside border here so we can have a nice fillet or you know bevel on the outside. Uh, and the same thing for the insides of these things. We wanna to try to maintain these edges. We don't wanna add any extra vertices. Um, you know, this is supposed to be a circle of eight vertices. We don't wanna add any extra in here. Uh, for something like this, if we put a subdivision surface on it, take a look at how it looks. Um, maybe that rounds out a little more than you want, so we can hit the G key a couple times and just move along the normal. And that'll that'll tighten those up. So maybe we'll do that next. And while it's in subdivision mode, and while we've got uh, the cage on, um, that'll show you whether that's got some odd vertices so like if you got like say an orphan here like this you got this kind of dimple here um, we can just connect that somewhere um, keep it from stretching and the nice thing here is we got a flat piece here so um, having weird um, weird bits like triangles and gons is not going to cause a problem uh, as long as we don't have any of those those weird bits along an edge like we don't want any of those weird bits um, inside any of the circles, and we certainly don't want any of them along the, the perimeter. So having them on the inside, you know, things like this little triangles or five-sided things, not a big deal. Uh, a triangle or a five-sided thing on the outside edge here uh, would cause some pinging, because that's that's where we start wrapping around going into, you know, into the y-axis. So here I'm just looking for anything I missed. Now just make sure nothing's pulling too much, because uh, we could get some texture stretching Maybe these could be joined together. Yeah, I'll leave it that way. Um, maybe tighten these up. All right, see how that looks. Turn on that. Now I'm just going to make sure everything is flat. So wireframe, edit mode, select everything. I'm going to perfectly flat. So medium, I'm going to hit S, Y, zero. And that should give me a nice flat piece. Let's turn that up so we got nice smooth. And let's go to single and mat cap. Take a look at it. And we shouldn't see any, any weird reflections here. All right, so far so good. Let's add a thickness to this. We'll add a solidify to it, push it back a bit. A little more, give us some room. And we only need uh, even thickness and we only need the rim. We don't need the back side of it. We'll never see that bit. So let's apply that. And let's turn off our subdivision just for a moment. Well, let's take a look at it just to see if we got any weird stretching. Uh, if we did our job right, uh, it should still look pretty darn smooth, so I'm okay with that. So let's add um, a little bit of a control loop here. Get out of here for a second. Um, so that uh, these bevels aren't quite so tight. So instead of adding a whole bunch of individual 
uh, edge loops. You know, I could go, you could go in here and hit, you know, Control R and, and do that kind of thing all the way, but um, it's going to take a long time. So what I'm just going to do, I'm going to go into the side here uh, in edit mode. I hit the K key and I'm going to pick maybe there. Hit A and then the C key, and the C is going to let me cut all the way through everything. And the A key is going to let me go vertically. So I'm going to just draw a vertical line down at the bottom. Hit Enter, and now you can see that I've created a control loop, not just on the outside, but uh, the same distance on all of the inside of the bevels for all the instruments. So let's see how that works now. It gives us a nice, nice bevel. Let's take a look at it in MatCap. All right, and we could even tighten up that more if we wanted to. Uh, we thought it was still not quite tight enough. Turn this back off again. Go into, oops, come on, there you go, edit mode. Um, this time I'm just gonna put an, another one here, maybe a little closer. All right, I can just take this whole thing, just box select it. And I'm selecting all the way through since I'm in wire mode. And I can just move this forward, GY. See how that looks. Just tightens it up a little bit. I don't want them to be too loose. Let's add a quick shader to this just to give us that light gray look. We get out of Matte Cat. And right now we're doing this everything procedurally, and later on I'll probably go into a Substance Painter and create it that way. So we'll call this uh, main panel, or maybe it's like interior gray, since I've got a lot of stuff inside it's going to use the same color. Call interior gray. And it's kind of a soft blue gray. That's good enough. And a little glossy. We'll copy that color and then we'll put it down here under display, viewport display, I'll just paste it in there. And if we look at materials, we'll see our material there. All right, let's create a um, some of the little details, little nuts and fasteners that are on the front of this thing. So let's hide our main panel. So I'm talking about these here. Um, I can create these in detail um, and then use a collection instance, and that way I don't use up tons of memory. If I wasn't going to do close-ups of the cockpit, I would probably do these with a bump map. But I'm going to have some, I'm envisioning that I'm going to have some really detailed pictures uh, of the cockpit. And I really want these to be um, actual geometry because I don't think they would really work as a bump uh, if you look at them too closely. So let's start with a screw. So I'm going to create a mesh. And I want to use the round cube. And we'll choose quads here and six, maybe four. Yeah, six. Uh, the nice thing about those collection instances is you can you can add, you can take some time, put some detail into a piece, um, and then not worry about using it over and over and over again and, and causing problems because uh, you don't really have the memory problems. Uh, you don't uh, accrue all kinds of memory issues. With the, the collection instances it's very nice. So let's go to edit mode. Select the back. Get rid of that. And let's scrunch the whole thing down a little bit. I'm just going to straighten these edges out. I'm just hitting SX in this case. And then I'm going to hit SZ on these to straighten it out. I'm giving my little cross in the middle. But I think they're too close. They're not close enough. Right? So I'm going to S Z point eight to shrink it down, and then I'm going to do the same thing with this, but S X S X point eight. And that's going to shrink it in. So now I can take these and these. That gives me my cross. E Y push it back a little further. S. All right, and this this weirdness is because of our clipping plane. Um, let me go to. Material and inches, just because I'm American. And let's change our view to something much smaller, maybe 500. That guy, that works. It was just the end. The end plane was so far away that it was really making it hard for Blender to 
discern these edges. Uh, let's go and add a subdivision to this. And you can see that makes it a little too soft. So we have a couple choices. We could either add edge loops to this. So I could do something like this and bring it forward. And that gives us not a bad look. Uh, the other option would be to um, add um, bevels to it, uh, bevel edges, which we'll do for other things later. So maybe I'll just I'll leave it as that, and that'll be our Phillips head screw. So let's uh, let's name that. I'm going to call it Phillips head screw, like that. Let's bring back our main panel and bring it forward. I'm just going to look in the top view, and fortunately our panel is perfectly flat, so once I get the height or the distance set for one of them, it's going to be the same for everything, which is a huge time saver. And we can just put it right there. I'm going to ro apply my rotation and scale so that it's set, and let's add a shader to that as well. Let's call that Phillips head screw. And we'll make this a metallic shader. So let's turn on our render, see what it looks like. Make it kind of a dark gray. And you know, I could spend more time later on making a, a nice procedural texture, but right now I'm just trying to get some color on there, make it metallic, and maybe make it a little shinier. Maybe not quite as dark. All right, that looks like a screw to me. So what I'm gonna do now is this needs to get placed at the origin of our scene because we're gonna use it as a collection instance. Let me hide my image plane. Oh, I turned off my screw, okay. So I've got my origin set in the middle of the screw and if I hit Alt-G, that's going to move my screw right to the middle of the uh, of the world scene. And I want it here because the collection instance, if it's if this screw is somewhere else, wherever I created a, a instance of this collection, it's going to use that offset uh, when it creates the new empty. So we don't want to do that. We want it to be right in the middle of our scene. And I want to create a, a new collection here. And I'm going to call this one Masters. And this is going to hold all of our master pieces. Uh, and I'm going to create another collection inside that. I'm going to call it Phillips Screw. You know, called screw master, and then within this collection, I'll take this guy and just drag him in there. So now, if I'm here and I hit Shift A and I go down to Collection Instance, I can look through. I can look through all of my collections, and you'll see that there's now a Phillips screw master, and it created it right where the cursor was, which was you know up there, and we've got basically an empty now. Now I can take this guy and scale down the empty center so it's not nearly as big. Let's bring back our main panel. And I'm going to hit Alt-R to reset the orientation of it. Because it was created uh, just the way my camera was oriented when I created it. So let's move it forward, GY. And bring back our image plane. And let's go to the top and just move it straight back. So it's just touching. Sorry, bang my mouse there. All right, so let's hide our panel for a moment. And we can put this guy right there. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hit Alt-D, which is going to create an instance of the object. And I'm going to go ahead and put my um, screws all over the place. And if I've got pairs that are lined up, like that one, I just hit Alt-D and then I hit G-Z to drive it straight up. Alt-D, I'm going to hit G-X to bring it over so that I've got pairs that are lined up properly. For this one, you just do Alt-D, put it there, Alt-D. And I'm just going to go around and put all the screws on. So I think that's all the screws. Now what you could do is uh, you could go to or individual origins and just kind of randomly grab a bunch and just to add some variety to the scene 
I'm just gonna hit R and then rotate them. And because I'm in individual origins, I rotate each individual screw about its axis. I'm just gonna hide those and then I'm gonna grab a bunch more kind of randomly through here. So let's let's move this. I have a collection called junk. I'm just gonna move it to junk to hide stuff out of the way. And that's down here, it's just turned off. Place I put stuff in case I might want it later. Let's turn back on our main panel. Now all of these screws ended up in this master's collection and I don't want that. I want to move them to their own collection somewhere else. So I'm going to grab them. I'm going to say M, move to a new collection, and I'm going to call it front screw panel screws. And I'm going to make sure that's not in the masters because the masters we are the are going to be all down here at the origin and we want everything else to be outside of that so those are our front panel screws and there's our main panel turn it off and maybe if I go back to the master I go to its material I can change that material to something and that'll show up everywhere so they all kind of oops they all kind of stand out now where are we here? There we go. All right, so let's take a look at this so far. All right, starting to look like something. So let's add that other fastener, the one that looks like this. So kind of a cone with a cylinder and then some knobs on the end of it. So let's take our image plane, turn it back on, and we'll use this as kind of a guide for how big we want to make it. So I'm going to create a cylinder, or a circle. We don't need that many, we can do eight. Put a subdivision on it. Make about that big. And I'm going to move it about there. And I'm just looking off to the right, trying to get an idea of proportions, because you know we don't have really any depth information from this drawing. So I turn off this for a moment, and I'm going to go E Y, and then S, and E Y. It's going to go straight out. Let's put a little ring there. I think it bevels in just a little bit, Something like that. Fill that, and there's a bit of a ridge here, so double click there, E, then Alt S, and it's gonna scale it out a little bit and give me that, that ridge that I want there. But I want it to be flat, so S, Y, zero. Then E, Y, a little bit of a, an edge there as well. And we're going to use uh, the bevel modifier to give us some control over these edges as opposed to having all kinds of uh, subdivision or edge loops here. I can double click on those edges. You can see I've got all the edges that I want to have kind of sharp. And under item I can go to bevel say one. And if I just have the subdivision on you can see how soft and mushy that is. But if I go up here and add a bevel modifier to it and I change it to something small, and then maybe go to, I like doing this in metric, meters, millimeters. So by changing the units here, um, it's what the units are here. So to make it maybe like a one millimeter, two segments, and just by weight, that means it'll only bevel where I've said to bevel it. Anything else is going to remain, um, remain smooth. Maybe this is a little bit too, Doesn't look too bad. All right, so that's that piece. So shade smooth. That was just the normals. I just hit Shift N to fix the normals there. Go to top view. Looks like I have an extra ring there that I don't necessarily need. Maybe I do. Hold on. 
I'll isolate it because I've got some extra. There we go. I feel like extra. When I extruded it, I must have gotten some extra stuff in there. So get rid of those vertices. And that should get rid of that weird sheeting that was there. Yeah, that's better. All right, so this thing has like four little nubs on it. So let me put my cursor right in the middle of that. And I want to say add a cube. Scale it down. Push it up. I think maybe this is a little smaller. So I hold S just to get a little bit more of a lip there. And probably not as far out either. Just, just eyeballing this. But the nice thing is I just make one and then I'm done. I can use it over and over and over again because both the front and back cockpits use this thing. And I don't need the inside faces so I can get rid of these. But since it's going to have a subdivision on it, I need to um, make sure these edges are hard. So if I add a subdivision to this, see how this back edge curves? I don't want to do that. I want that to stay sharp just to make sure it stays inside the geometry. So I'm going to add a mean crease to that. And then for these edges here, I'm going to make those a bevel of one. And then if I go in front view, I can say Double uh, shift to select my base thing, control L, and copy modifiers. And make sure that I apply rotation and scale to both of these. You can see how that makes a difference with the bevel. The bevel is sensitive to uh, the scale. So one millimeter was fine before, but maybe 0.05. And maybe I'll leave that at one. Nah, 0.5. Try 0.5 here. It's just kind of a soft rubbery thing, so I think that's probably all right. So let's um, go into edit mode, select everything, and with my cursor set to 3D cursor, I'm going to shift D, rotate 180 degrees, hit A, select everything, shift D, rotate 180 degrees, or rotate 90 degrees, sorry, and then control J, join it all together, shade smooth. And there's my other fitting. So let's give that kind of a, a rubbery material. So we got our materials, I'll we'll call it um, instrument rubber. And we'll just make this kind of a dark, dark gray, a little, a little glossy, a little darker maybe. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll do more uh, material stuff later this is really just trying to get a feel for how everything's looking just quickly. And then down here, uh, we'll just make this dark gray so that you can see it like that. All right, so let's give this a name. So I hit F2, call it instrument on nut. And we'll do the same thing we did with the Phillips screwdriver or Phillips head. I'm just checking to see where my origin, my origin's fine right there. Uh, let's go out of render mode, there we are. Okay, so I'm gonna hit Alt G to move it to the origin again. I'm going to hit M, new collection, we'll call it um, Instrument Thumb Nut Master is the name of the collection, it shows up here. And I'm going to move this into my masters collection. So I've got two masters in here. Let me just change the color here so we can see it better. So I've got 
two masters there. Now if I go back to our panel, sorry, I isolated, and I go back here, if I hit Shift A and I go Collection Instance, and I can do the instrument thumb nut master, it creates a new uh, max, a collection instance of it. Shrink down the size of my empty so that it's not obtrusive, like that. RX90, negative. Go to top view, and I'm just going to move it so that it's just, just there. Now I can go and place this wherever I need to place it. So let me hide my panel. And I'm just going to stick this guy all over the place. And I was hitting Shift D to duplicate these. I don't know that it makes a difference, but Alt D definitely makes an instance of things as opposed to a copy. So I'm going to just delete them just to be safe. So Alt D is what I really should be doing. Now looking at these on the panel, I feel like that perhaps they're they're a little too big. Um, so what I can do is I can take the master one. Let's move all these to their own collection first. Let's uh, move these to a new collection. Um, thumb nuts. Just to keep it that way. And then if I go to the original one, so I've got my original one selected but I'm looking at my instrument panel. Now if I, if I scale the original one, S, my medium point, you can see that I can scale all these down at the same time because they're all, all using exactly the same data. So that looks good. It looks a little better. They were, they were a little tight in some spots. Uh, but then I just want to make sure that I apply rotation and scale this guy because I'm no longer apply rotation and scale, so apply rotation and scale. Turn back on the panel. Let's jump up there, see what that looks like. I don't think there is one there. Eh, maybe there is. Just a little close to the edge of that dial. I think we'll be all right. All right, any more? over here. Alt D, Alt D. All right, let me turn back on our panel. Take a render. Hide that. So that's what we've got so far. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll end this lesson here and then in the Next lesson, um, what we'll do is we'll talk about uh, creating some of these instruments and getting some of the dials started. Right, that'll, that'll really make it start to come to life. All right, so I'll, I'll see you in the next episode.